Welcome to Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for this Monday, October 1, 2012. Our top story is an update from the world of evolution. If you know anything about evolution, you know it's a fairly slow process when measured from a human perspective. However, bacteria generally reproduce very quickly, which unfortunately has led to the very serious issue of antibiotic resistance. This fast reproduction and adaptation can also be helpful to scientists that study evolution, which brings us to the 25-year-old experiment happening at Michigan State University. The setup is pretty simple. Twelve flasks containing E. coli, low concentrations of glucose to feed them, and lots of citrate. Now the citrate is the important part. The inability of E. coli to metabolize it in the presence of oxygen is a defining characteristic, separating it from other bacteria. It's estimated E. coli's ancestors lost that ability about 13 million years ago, but after 33,000 generations, one of the flasks became cloudy. That was the beginning of E. coli's evolution. The MSU experiment is now over 56,000 generations in, and the bacteria are now reliably feeding on the citrate. Scientists continuously kept track of each population's genetics so we have a play-by-play -play of how evolution happened in this experiment. First, two mutations occurred as early as 20,000 generations in, which likely set the stage for this adaptation. Next, a dormant gene was duplicated and the copy was activated in this bacterial genome. This gene coded for a citrate pump protein. Finally, several other mutations occurred allowing citrate to be fully metabolized and this included further duplication of the pump protein gene. The ability to track this process so precisely gives scientists a tremendous insight into the mechanisms of evolution and demonstrates the power that small successive changes have over many generations. Next, we have a story from the world of material science, as it applies to biology. Scientists at Rice University have made progress in the development of collagen synthesis. Collagen is a critical structural protein in humans and many other animals, but is somewhat understudied given its importance. Not only does it essentially hold your tissue together, it also has complex interactions with other proteins. These interactions influence how cells within a tissue behave and even differentiate. Structurally, it's also somewhat unique. It can actually be compared to the structure of DNA, with some major differences. Collagen is made from three intersecting spirals, similar to the double helix of DNA. Also like DNA, collagen can be formed from multiple sequences, and these scientists originally designed a computer model to test various collagen sequences. The key feature is the interaction between negative and positively charged amino acids. Collagen structure seemed most stable when these charged molecules were closest to balancing each other out. Once the software had produced some potentially stable sequences, they tested some. Fortunately, the structures were stable as predicted, which means this and other groups can begin developing collagen-based biomaterials. Like we mentioned before, collagen is somewhat understudied, so these biomaterials will have tremendous research applications, such as studying the aforementioned interactions with other proteins and cells, even cancer research. Collagen based off this work will also have a number of practical applications. For example, new materials used in reconstructive surgeries, cosmetics, and cellular scaffolds. Like we've discussed before, much regenerative medicine research is going into cellular scaffolding for new tissues and organs to grow from. Since our bodies already use collagen, biomaterials based on it are the obvious choice. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider subscribing and be sure to check the links in the video description.